The UK government is proposing legislation which could land journalists in prison for up to 14 years merely for publishing information which could embarrass them. Up to 14 years in prison, that's real cancel culture. We've heard so much about the importance of freedom of speech and how people can't speak anymore, but there's barely been a murmur from these free speech warriors about this proposed law, which would effectively make reporting on anything the UK government deems a threat to national security criminal. National security, now that's an elastic enough concept that they could use it basically against anything. A law like the one proposed will create a psychology where people second guess themselves about publishing information. Bit by bit, people start questioning themselves about questioning anything the state does. And then you're in a very dangerous, dark place. You saw the general worldwide clampdown on independent journalism recently with the Pegasus revelations. In this case, the Israeli state facilitating industrial levels of spying on all the parts of our society which keep us informed about what's going on and also protect us from excesses of the state. Pegasus dealt with technology being produced by a private Israeli company, but during the Snowden revelations, the Tempora program operated by GCHQ, the UK's largest intelligence agency, was exposed. GCHQ has probably the most invasive anywhere in the world. Yep. It's called Tempora and it's the world's first full take, they call it, and that means content in addition to metadata on everything. That kind of story would not be able to be published if these new laws were passed. They want to make the next Alan Rusbridger, who was the editor of The Guardian during the Snowden revelations, too scared to go through with it. And this kind of legislation would effectively make it so that the next Rusbridger would be risking their freedom to publish information which is obviously in the public interest. A large percentage of government secrecy is about protecting them from accountability rather than protecting you and your family from outside threats. There was an investigation recently from Open Democracy which showed that there's a clearinghouse unit in the Cabinet Office which vets all politically sensitive freedom of information requests. And in that context, whistleblowers are all we have. Whistleblowers of conscience are the lifeblood of democracy. These people are heroes, the next Snowdens, the next Catherine Guns, and we need more of them. And that is why the Home Office's new proposals seek new laws which would make it much harder to blow the whistle or increase the penalties. There are hostile states who want to damage British national security, there's no doubt about that, and there should be laws to guard against that. But independent investigative journalists are not a threat. They are the lifeblood of democracy and we need to nurture them, not criminalise them. At Declassified, we've seen at the coalface this attack on independent journalism. In October 2020, we found out that the Ministry of Defence had blacklisted us merely for publishing information which we'd got from the Ministry of Defence itself about its role in the war in Yemen, which is being led by the Saudis and has created the world's worst humanitarian disaster. GCHQ blacklisted me merely for doing a story about its controversial schools program where they were going into primary and secondary schools and taking with them some of the largest arms companies in the world from BAE Systems, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin and exposing school children to officials from these companies who were helping them build drones and other things. I published that story and subsequent to that I asked for information GCHQ had on me. I got a raft of emails from them which showed that they stopped engaging with me after the first article was published because they said it was a negative long read. One of the emails in a thread about me was titled, watch out, watch out, there's a journo about. And that is a window into how the British state thinks about independent critical journalists. They don't see it as a part of a functioning vibrant democracy, they see it as a threat to them and to their power. They constantly extol the virtues of a free media and a free press. This is the day on which uh, we call for an end to impunity for those who commit crimes against journalists around the world. Look after the freedom of the press and stick up for journalists and all those who tell the truth to power. At the same time as attacking press freedom in the UK and trying to effectively stop any kind of critical journalism in the sphere of national security from being practiced, the obvious example is Julian Assange, who sits in Belmarsh Maximum Security Prison in London, merely for publishing evidence of war crimes, in that case by the United States, but the British government has been a willing partner in his persecution. It would be funny if it wasn't so tragic that this is being led by Boris Johnson, who is a former journalist and also presented by the media as a libertarian. Don't get me wrong, the Johnson administration is awful but this is just the latest administration to want to clamp down on media freedom. 
when Dr. David Kelly revealed information that undermined the case for the war in Iraq through the BBC, the Blair administration went to war with the BBC and tried to destroy him and destroy the journalist that was producing the reports. The Law Commission, where many of these proposals to clamp down on media freedom started, published their recommendations in 2017. Then the Prime Minister was Theresa May. Duncan Campbell, a journalist with Time Out, stood trial in the 80s under Margaret Thatcher for revealing information about GCHQ. This is the tactics of Eastern Europe and of South Africa. What is about to go on here is a vindictive attempt to placate the Prime Minister's political embarrassment and fury by seeking revenge. So none of this is new, but it's been ratcheted up because we live in a new world now. They're more scared than ever that independent journalists will get hold of information which exposes them and they want to stop it. Most of the media is not free. They think they're free, but they're not. So they don't join in when we push back against these new laws and these clampdowns on dissent and media freedom because they are operating often as an arm of the state itself. What the government wants is a pliant media. And to be honest, most of the time they have that. They give access to journalists who say and write things that they want them to write. And it's easy to do that type of journalism. I did it before for the Financial Times. You're in a position where you're talking to people who anything they say is a story by itself. So the stories write themselves and everyone gets on and you're happy because you've got your status and your wage, but the public misses out. Now, when you exit that system, you understand it's much harder to do journalism because the stories you find, you've got to find them yourself. You can't find them by just picking up the phone and calling the prime minister or one of his ministers. The Westminster style of journalism, which has taken off massively under Johnson, impoverishes our democracy because effectively, we have the top journalists in the country acting as conduits for the top politicians. And that is not how journalism should be. The truth we seek is to be found outside the Westminster bubble. In these increasingly dark times, Double Down News and Declassified are on the front line of holding the powerful to account and preserving independent critical media in this country. We're not backed by billionaires, we're not an arm of the state, we work for you. But we can only do this with your support. Join the future of journalism, join Double Down News on Patreon.